Has this ever happened to you? You go through your phone's camera roll and all you see is endless copies of the same photos. And most of them are just random things that you see in the street or maybe you're just trying to get the perfect selfie. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when I look back at these photos, I don't feel the same as, for example, when I look at old photo albums. That's real nostalgia. This, this is not. So it got me thinking, why do we take so many photos? This was my grandfather's camera. He gave it to me a few years ago. And in fact, he gave me two. And since he gave me this, they, they have been sitting in a box under my bed. I mean, they look good and everyone looks at me if I walk around like this taking photos. Don't worry, there, there's no film inside. But they're not really practical to use. Why would I want to use a 70 year old camera when I can use this? the archetype of photography, the result of endless years of research and developing. Why in the world would I change this for this? Seems like going back to the old Ford Model T when now we have all these Teslas that can drive by themselves. Faster is better, right? Well, that's, that's what we're going to find out. So when I was planning this video, I did some research online and I found this experiment that I thought was really cool. Imagine a museum full of different pieces of art and a bunch of people that had never seen that museum before. The experiment was pretty simple. There were two groups of people. The first one was directed to just observe the different pieces, while the second group was told to photograph every piece. In the end, the participants were asked how many pieces they could recover, and the results were pretty obvious. If participants were taking photos, they remembered fewer objects and remembered less details about them than if they rather only observed the objects and did not photograph them. Now think about all the moments that you photograph instead of actually leaving them. Look at that tree. That deserves a photo. What I think that is happening is that we treat this gadget as sort of an external memory device. We have this expectation that the camera is going to remember things for us. And so we focus more on photographing and capturing physical copies instead of actually engaging in real moments. Also, how awesome is this mural? This one, this one deserves a photo. This means that we will look at those photos in the future, if we do, because let's be honest, most of us never look back at all the photos that we have in our camera roll. And we will try to remember something that we didn't live fully in the first place. And that's why I think film photography can help with that. It might not be perfect, but I think that's what makes old albums so satisfying to look at. Let me explain. But first, I need to tell you about a company that played a major role on my filmmaking career. Because, as you guys know, I never went to film school. Actually, I have a degree in computer science. And so, all I know about filmmaking, I learn online. And so, that's why I love to work with Skillshare to give you guys the same opportunity. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community, especially for creators. And they offer more than 25,000 classes in topics like photography, video, freelancing and the premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join as many classes or communities as you want. I would recommend you to watch this one that goes deeper into film photography and also this one about how to tell travel stories. It's also incredibly affordable. The annual subscription is less than $10 a month. But since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get two months for free. So you can take this as an opportunity to learn a new skill while you're stuck at home. And maybe we'll get to 100K. All right, that's it for the sponsor. Back to the video. So, First of all, it's way more fun to photograph. There's 
there's something about loading the film and putting the right settings and uh, pressing the shutter. I mean, just wait. I mean, just first of all, look at the camera. And then the shutter, just, just listen to this. So yeah, I think it's way more fun to photograph. And by the way, we should load some more film. I'm so curious to see if these cameras actually work. Because I've been taking photos, but I have no idea if the photos are there or not. I think this is, this is not 120. So apparently this camera doesn't work with 120 film because I, I was trying to put the roll here, but it doesn't fit, it's too big. All right, so this camera doesn't work with this film. So I'm going to use the same camera. Let's see if I'm better now loading the film. Can you imagine having to do this every time you want to take eight photos? <laughs> All right, so now. Ooh, did you see that? It took me less than a minute. Let's go shoot some more film. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> then it's expensive. I know it might not make sense, but if we're talking about medium format, which is the case, Every roll costs about 10 euros, and then you also have to pay for the developing, which is another five or 10 euros. And you only get eight exposures, so every time that you press the shutter, you're, you're paying like three bucks. So you really need to be intentional, and in, in the moments that you decide to capture are, are moments that really deserve to be preserved. And that's why being expensive is, is bad, but it's also a good thing. By the way, I'm in Porto, which is in the north of Portugal, and this is not my first time here. But can we just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this city is? Dude, my country is beautiful. And, and lastly, it's not immediate. I know it might also sound strange, but when you have to take the time to put the right settings and turn these small sliders to get the perfect settings, in some way, you immerse yourself even more in the world because you have to pay attention to so many details like the light and composition or even interact with people if you want to take a portrait of someone. And also, having to wait to see your photos because obviously there is no screen might not make sense nowadays, but it's just so amazing when you receive the photos from the lab and you get to relieve those moments again. I don't know why, but it's ju it's just an amazing feeling. Oh, look. I have my own restaurant here in downtown Porto. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My name is a fish. It's a very famous fish in Portugal. That's why I see my name everywhere. <laughs> So in the end, I think that analog photography is a good exercise because with your phone, it's so easy to take photos to everything and fill hundreds of gigabytes with meaningless photos. And I'm not saying that analog is better than digital or the opposite. My work relies on digital, so I'm obviously very thankful. But I think that with this video, I can conclude that even with digital, sometimes the best option is to not photograph at all. In the end, I think we still have a lot to learn from film. As Carlos Beltran said, maybe our love for film goes beyond photography itself. It's more than the cameras we use or the stocks we choose. In a world where everything seems to pass us by in a split second, the process behind film photography reminds us that sometimes it's okay to slow down to acknowledge everything and everyone around us and to take in every moment, one frame at a time. Thank you, Grandpa, for reminding me that faster sometimes isn't better. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.